What is up guys? Welcome back to my channel. My name is David Hanlon, aka The Laptop Legend. And in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about the stocks that I'm gonna be buying tomorrow on March 1st to start off the month on a good note and make sure that this is just as profitable month as February was. Now, if you aren't keeping up with me, I closed in $80,000 in day trading profits in February. And uh, honestly, it's probably gonna be pretty tough to beat that, but I'm gonna do my best. And I think with all these opportunities coming up, there's a chance that I can, you know, at least get somewhat close to that. So that's my goal for this month. And uh, hopefully you guys can come along for the ride and take advantage of some of these opportunities because they are absolutely killer. Also, you know, this market's changed in a little bit, guys. It's it's changed a little bit. We had some scary news come out. The SEC suspended like 15 more OTC tickers. So we need to play with extra caution and be extra careful about where we are putting our hard-earned money. Because if you put your money into something that gets suspended for two weeks, Typically speaking, it gaps down like 80% and you lose 80% of your money like that. I have a great example of that for you, so I'm gonna talk about that and uh, show you guys how you can avoid getting caught in one of those traps because that would really suck. And if you do that, it might you know destroy your account if you go in with too big size. So I'm gonna talk about that. I'm gonna talk about the stocks that I'm buying tomorrow and uh, yeah, let's dive into the charts. Mmm. Oh, kind of chilly in here. Good thing I got this nice Laptop Legends hoodie. If you wanna get one of these, definitely check out the link in the description. All right, guys, so I'm here at my laptop, and this is the article talking about these 15 stocks that were suspended by the SEC and why they chose these specific stocks. I really don't know because honestly, there were a lot of other stocks, GME, AMC, etc., in the meme stock world that had, I feel like, a lot more social media hype uh, behind them. But you know, OTCs are subject to more manipulation just because of how cheap they are. A little bit of money moves them more than you know the type of money it would take to move a stock like GME. So potentially that's why they were more concerned about this. But uh, this is just something we really need to be careful of in OTC land. And one of these specific stocks, uh, I, I don't know most of them. I really don't know most of them, honestly. But one of them, I actually tried to trade. And the only reason I couldn't was because uh, it was pink no information. And Fidelity, I guess, actually protected me in that regard because if there is pink no information, you're not allowed to trade the stock on Fidelity. You're just not allowed to do it. And uh, this is what it looks like now. Now there's a skull and crossbones, but before it had a, uh, a stop sign. So ILUS, that's a good example, pink no information. And uh, this is another stock I would like to trade, but it has a stop sign and I couldn't. So you really, really got to be careful, guys, uh, putting your money in stocks like this, especially if they have a stop sign and they have no information and they're pink sheets, I would really recommend not putting a ton of money swinging in, in stocks like this. And if you want to trade them, get in and out in a couple of minutes because your risk is obviously a lot less if you're only in there for a few minutes. The chance that the SEC halts it in those couple of minutes that you're in the trade are pretty slim. But if you're swing trading stocks like this that, uh, that have a stop sign, I would just be very, very careful, guys. Be very careful. That's uh, the main thing that I want to point out here. Because uh, just to give you an example of what happens, COUV, this stock was halted here. You can see the date, February 9th, and it reopened here February 25th. And uh, I mean, you look at this candle, it was at, what was it, 80, hold on, what was it at? It was at 85 cents. It closed at, you know, 80, 84 cents is where it closed at, COUV. And now it's trading at 16 cents, guys. It's trading at 16 cents. And uh, if you put a huge amount of your account into one position like this, you're gonna blow up your account if it gets halted. So I really just want you guys to exercise caution because we've had an insane February, an insane January, and the market could slow down. Typically speaking, the fastest period of the market is the beginning of the year and the end of the year. So if it slows down in the middle and there's a lot of SEC halting of, of companies like this, we could see some of the momentum die. And we just really need to be careful to conserve, I guess, conserve the capital that we have. Uh, that, that's honestly the most important thing. Now, that doesn't mean that there's not gonna be opportunities that we can capitalize on. And we still wanna go in hard and go in big when there is an opportunity that is worth capitalizing on. And uh, some of those, obviously, I'm gonna talk about today. So TSMPD, if you guys did not see my video about the investor call, I did a, a video talking about it. And uh, basically, they did a really big acquisition, uh, you know, a $20 million acquisition that's going to help a lot to grow their company and get them the revenues that they've been needing. So they bought Tickery. I'm not, again, I'm not, I'm not going to go into this super in depth because I did a whole video on this, but essentially uh, they released this news after hours you know, they talked about it in the investor call, which was after market close. And uh, that information was not available to people. So 
You can see it went up a little bit at the end of the day because there was some hype going in and people expecting that because George Sharp tweeted about it, but I really don't know what effect it's going to have. TSMPD, a lot of times, it's one of those stocks where people buy the hype and sell the news. So could we see a morning panic on Monday? Absolutely. But honestly, if I had to guess, I think we get a pretty decent green day if I had to guess. Um, so I'm going to be looking to ride that momentum. If it looks like it's taken off right out of the gate like this, I'm going to look to buy in with some pretty big size. If it looks like it's panicking, I'm going to wait for it to find a bottom and then get in because, you know, it could morning panic and then continue on and end green. So that's what I'm going to be looking for on this one. But that news is a pretty big deal in my opinion. And uh, there's a lot of big things coming from this company. So I think there's a lot of catalysts and there's going to be a lot of volatility. And volatility, again, is what we need to profit as day traders. So I'm really looking in heavily to that one. OZSC, uh, again, I'm in the Discord with the CEO, and uh, he was saying that they have some type of you know $10 million deal, supposedly, that, that uh, went through. So I'm not sure if we can be expecting a PR sometime soon on that. He said in the overall market conditions right now, uh, releasing a PR is like pissing into the wind. Kind of funny, kind of a little bit, you know, I guess, I don't know, gross, whatever. I'm sorry if that offends you guys. But I mean, it's a good... Uh, a good explanation because he's done several good PRs and the price has just faded off because kind of all of OTC land has been fading off recently uh, after a ton of run-ups. So could we be finding a bottom? I think we potentially could be. And uh, this could be a very decent price. You can see that it looks like there's some decent support here. So if we get news of a, a $10 million deal, oh my gosh, OZSC is going to spike really hard. So I'm going to be watching very carefully. And this is one of those times where like if you can get in early right before the release of a PR, like... This could be what it looks like. And it just, I mean, it spikes four cents a share right out of the gate. If you get in 100,000 shares, that's a lot of money. I mean, that's that's 4,000 bucks like that. I mean, it could run a lot more than that, you know, if you buy 200,000 shares. It's, it's a lot of money. So that's what I'm going to be looking to do, waiting for the press release on this one. But I think uh, I think this is one that's going to really, really be good in the next couple of months. So OZSC, keep an eye on that one. MITI, I know I haven't talked a lot about this recently, but oh my goodness, guys. Again, I'm still holding 127,500 shares of MIDI. I was hoping to buy more here, but after my loss, I just didn't feel comfortable. My $15,000, $16,000 loss on CCIV, I didn't feel comfortable adding in this area, uh, which stinks because, man, you see, <laughs> all it takes is a little bit of volume on MITI and it absolutely goes insane. So, I mean, this thing had just been bleeding off uh, once it broke that support in uh, I would say the 40 area. So I bought a ton in the 40 area and it kind of faded down, but then just, wow, I mean, it spiked up really hard. I don't know if someone knows something we don't. I know that there were some institutional investors taking part in MIDI, so I don't know if this is them buying in some more, but uh, we get back over 40, things could get really interesting. And man, if this thing breaks out past those highs at uh, 59.90, this thing is gonna run and this thing can see dollars very quickly. So I'm still swinging my entire position. If it dips back below, I'll probably have the confidence to add some more now, uh, now that I have some more day trading profits built back up after my CCIV loss. But this is this is very, very high on watch. This gets any type of good press release and this thing is running at least 20 cents a share, if not more, because again, if it breaks out past this, uh, this high here, right at 60, there, there's not gonna be much resistance. A lot of people have a lot of shares and are not selling any until dollars. Management team is insane, so I'm very, very excited for the future of MIDI, and it's cool to see it come back up here. We need to get it to $3 so that uh, WB can uh, take me out for stakes, so we'll see if we can do that by the end of the month. That's my goal on that one. Uh, ENZC, this one actually finished really, really strong as well, and uh, man, it, I mean, it just, it just ran up into close pretty much straight up, so probably we can ex expect a gap about this one I actually finished green on the day uh despite having a, a big morning panic there so i'm not sure if there was some expectation of news on this one as well i'm not in any discord for this one if you guys know of any news coming on enzc definitely drop it down below but this is one that's heavily on the watch list because man it has the volatility and you get any type of news this thing runs a lot i mean look at that gap up bro look at that gap up that's an insane gap up that gapped up like what seven cents my goodness that's crazy. You take 10,000 shares, that's 700 bucks overnight. I mean, that's beautiful, man. I love that. So very interested to see what's going to happen with this one. And uh, man, I'm just looking for the same patterns. If I can get a morning panic dip by, boom, I'm going to nail it. If I get a press release that I can hop on early and it starts spiking up, boom, I'm going to nail it. And uh, besides that, I'm just managing my risk, guys, because overall, the market has been really bloody the last week or so. I mean, it's been fading down. We've had a lot of big red days. And could we see Something like what happened last March where the entire market crashes, you know, 15, 20%, 25%. I forget how much exactly it crashed, but I mean, 
that could happen. It's not out of the question. Uh, until we get the stimulus, you know, I mean, we could see a, we could see a big panic. And uh, we got to stay liquid, stay cash, and be ready to, to dive in headfirst if there's a big dip in the market because that's how you make a ton of money really quickly. Waiting for those dips, getting the great entries. So when it bounces back, you're set. If you buy right before a big dip, it's kind of like, eh. You, sure, it comes back, but now you break even. Versus if you wait for the dip, that's why I prefer to stay cash. And that's why I like being a day trader. That's why I like being a day trader. Uh, AABB, this thing was actually, man, I mean, it had a nice spike out of the gate. I know mama banked on this one, mama in the Discord. That was crazy. Great overnight play. Uh, this one, man, we'll see if this support here holds. If it does hold, it could start to come back up. Again, first green day after a couple big red days. Uh, but I'm not too, too convinced that this, this support holds up. And if it keeps falling, it's going to be some more nice panic dip buys. Now, something you have to keep in mind with ABB, for whatever reason, I'm not sure if it's just me. Maybe you guys can weigh in here as well. But I've heard from a lot of people in the Discord that we really have slow executions on AABB. So, like, it's one of those OTC stocks where you buy it and you don't get filled and then you try to cancel and it doesn't cancel, and then you get filled on the way back down like a minute later. So be very careful with this one. I would take smaller size. I uh, I heard, well, I guess I read a Reddit expose on this, basically saying that it was a fake company. Now, I don't know if I believe that. I always assume any OTC stock that I day trade is a fake company because it's easier to protect myself that way, but it looked startlingly similar to the expose that uh, came out on SOS. And I don't know if you guys saw that, but essentially they, they said a pretty much the same thing. You know, like all the business locations are faked. All the management is fake and taken from photos from other companies and stuff like that. So just be very, very careful on AABB. Again, I'm not saying that's what it is. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to, I don't know talk bad about a company that might be a great company. I just don't know. I haven't done the research, but someone posted something about it and it looked a little bit sketchy. And uh, when my sketch radar starts going off, I, I really play it extra careful. So this potentially could be one that gets suspended. I don't know. I'm not willing to put in a ton of money on this one just in case something like that happens. Uh, but I'm still willing to trade it small with, you know, 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 shares. So that's what I'm looking for on this one. Again, you get some nice rips out of the gates, some nice panic dip buys, and uh, we'll just, we'll see what it breaks. Um, let's see. Forwardly, Again, if TSMPD is running, Forwardly is running as well. So if TSMPD spikes out of the gate and you miss an entry on TSMPD, look for an entry on Forwardly because typically they move very similarly together. Uh, so that's what I'm expecting out of Forwardly. And this one is nice, but sometimes there's some hidden sellers that hold it down. You can see here, uh, there was a reserve seller who, who was just, I think he was just showing 100 on the ask, yet a ton of buying could not break through him. Same thing here. So just be careful of that, guys. Same thing here. You know, when you see a tiny seller and it can't break through that, know that you're you're fighting someone who has a lot bigger size. You're fighting a market maker and potentially it's going to do what, I mean, not, not potentially, it's, it's literally going to do whatever they want it to do. So if they want to move it up, it's going to move up. If they want to move it down, it's going to move down. So you got to play extra carefully when you see price action like that. Because again, the most important thing in March is protecting those gains and protecting the capital because we don't want to bleed everything that we earned in the beginning of the year. We really don't. Uh, AITX, this one, it's always on watch. Had a nice little dip by in the morning, but fat dude, it looks like, is back on AITX. So until we get, I don't know, some incredible press release, uh, this thing is probably going to be tough to trade unless there's a, a big panic dip by with a good entry because it just trades really weirdly, man. It feels like there's a ton of big sellers at every single increment, and it feels like fat dude, sumo man, is just sitting on it, Ugh, doing one of those, those body slams, man. It's tough. And occasionally he'll go for a smoke break and you'll see it pop up and then he'll come back and it'll, it'll, it'll fade on back down. So just be careful of this stock. I feel like there's some manipulation on it, but you never know. AOII is the last one. Again, uh, nice panic dip buy. Nice little bounce there. Nothing too, too big, but I mean, it, it's nice. If you look at the overall chart here, going back to this area, I mean, it's coming in towards that support in that six cent area. So we'll see if it can make it down there. I mean, if it, if it morning panics from 7.4 and, and comes down towards six, I would look to buy towards six to see if we can get a nice little bounce off of there. So that's what I'm expecting on this one. I mean, it's definitely been bleeding a lot since the top there. I mean, it's down what over well over 50% now uh, from that, that high there at 20 cents. So we'll have to see if this can find a base or if this is one of those that just spikes up and then fades all the way back down. So I wouldn't be holding and hoping this stock, but that's what I'm looking for on this. Again, a few other notable mentions, M-I-N-E, uh, definitely some potential for profit there, but this one's a little more choppy than I like to trade. Um, let's see what else we got. We have T-S-O-I. This one made some moves. It was up 14%, but again, Pretty low volume, tough for me to trade, pretty choppy. Um, let's see, what what else am I missing? Um, 
Oh yeah, I guess I want to talk about this real quickly. Uh, let me let me pull this up. PFMS. So this was an incredible intraday chart, and uh, man, man oh man, this is this is one I could have gone a little bit bigger on, but it was a little bit low volume, so I didn't want to risk it. But you can see, just look at this intraday chart, guys, and uh, this is how I knew this was a good opportunity. You see this stock spike up from what 73 all the way up to 125 and then it drops from 125 down to 20 down to 19 125 down to 19 i mean it was like a what was that a 70 80 percent drop in like an hour that's insane that is insane that is overextended to the downside so i took a stab at this again i called this out in the discord and a couple other people banked on me banked with me on it and uh it was just cool. It was a nice little trade. So when you see stocks that are like that overextended, it's worth taking a stab at. And you know, it, you always wonder when they're down 80%, why they're down 80%. So it, it might make you a little more sketched out. Like what just happened? Did their CEO get arrested for fraud? I'm looking at you. Uh, what was that? Oh, I can't remember the ticker. There's so many tickers in my head, guys. One, one of these OTCs, their, their CEO got arrested for fraud. MFST. Yeah, that's what it was. MFST. <laughs> Their CEO got arrested for fraud, and you can see that I had a nice little gap down off of that. But uh, yeah, I mean, just just be careful on these stocks, guys. Ultimately, most important thing, conserving capital. Let's take it small, you know, not size huge into any trades because we don't want to blow up our accounts from the beginning. We want to start off March on a good note. We want to start off with a green day. So that's what I'm going to be looking to do, guys. If I missed any stocks, you know, feel free to comment them down below. And uh, yeah, I mean, all these are OTCs. I'm not really focused on NASDAQs right now. I mean... There's some XTNT, this one went, went pretty hard. But I mean, for me, I just, I realized that I don't have much of an advantage here. I'm not patient enough to, to, to wait through this choppiness and uh, NASDAQs are not my specialty. So maybe I'll, I'll take the time to learn NASDAQs if we get a slow OTC month or two. But uh, for now, I'm still focused on OTCs because I feel like that's where the, the best opportunity is and where it's easiest to read the momentum. So if you want to look at these stocks, feel free to do it. OCGN was also popping up uh, pretty big. But it's just, it's not one that I have any interest in. LIXT, another one, FSR, Ruby. I mean, there's a lot, guys. There's a lot. But ultimately, I'm focused on OTCs because it's what's it's what's worked for me. And I feel like it's uh I feel like it's easier. You know, it's uh, it's easier momentum to read, if that makes sense. So that's why I'm focused on it. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did and you made it to the end, uh, please gently caress the like button, you know. <laughs> Like that, you don't have to smash it uh, if, you, if, you, if you're against violence. I understand that. WB, I'm looking at you. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, you know the drill. Let's grow better together.